morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today's video is just about this little equation right here. So we want to show that e to the 2 thirds times pi times i is indeed equal to e to the pi i to the 2 thirds. Okay, so a user suggested that and he encountered a problem and I will talk about it at first. So we are going to talk about left side at first. You know this is just Euler's formula and we can plug all those values in. So this equals to the cosine of 2 thirds times pi plus i times the sine of 2 thirds times pi. So the first thing he got wrong is he, um, I don't know why, he switched those two values. So the actual value of this, if you plug it into your calculator or you calculate it by hand, it doesn't matter is minus one half plus i times the square root of three over two. So he switched those two, I don't know why. And then he calculated the right side. So the right side will give you the cosine of pi plus i times the sine of pi to the two third power. Okay, and yeah, you, you can evaluate that. So the cosine of pi is just, that's zero. Um, I'm sorry, this is uh, minus 1, so this is minus 1, and then plus i times 0. Okay, and then he said, well, this whole thing is then equal to minus 1 to the 2 third power. And this is just equal to the third root of minus 1, but square. And then he concluded, well, this is just the third root of 1, because minus 1 times minus 1 is, well, 1. And this is just one. And here's the contradiction. So those two are unequal, in his opinion. But here's the point. You are dealing with a complex number and you can't deal with the roots of a complex number in that way. So let me give you another example. Let's think about, well, here's one famous one. So let's say one. What's that equal to? Well, that's just the square root of, of one. It is. So we can rewrite this. So that's the square root of minus 1 times minus 1. Hmm. And now you could um, expand this a bit. So that's just the square root of minus 1 times the square root of minus 1. Well, and this is i and this is i. So well, we can do this. So that's i times i and this is indeed minus 1. Hey, that's a contradiction. 1 equals to minus 1. Something's not right here. And that's the problem. You were dealing with... This minus 1 right here, like it's a real valued function, a real number. So you can just do that. So here's the thing you should do actually. So what you should do, and at first keep in mind, this thing is element of the complex number. You started with a complex number, so you have to end up with a complex number. And now keep in mind what a complex number looks like. So a complex number, and minus 1 to the 2 third power, is indeed a complex number, is of this structure, a plus i times b. And now you can um, take the third power on both sides, so that you get rid of this power right here. So that means that's equivalent to minus 1, but square, equals to a plus i b to the third power. And now you can multiply minus 1 by minus 1 right here, so that you get 1. So this is, this is indeed just 1. So that's fine. And now we are going to distribute everything into everything right here. So at first that's just a squared um, plus 2 iba minus b squared times a plus ib. And after that what we get is just a to the third power um, plus 2 iba squared and then minus b squared times a plus a squared times i And now we can factor this out a bit. So that's a to the third power minus 3 ab squared plus i times, and this is just 2a squared times b minus 
uh, plus a squared times b minus b to the third power. And now we can compare. So here's a complex number on this side. And well, that's technically also a complex number on this side. And we want to make those two equal. So what can we observe? Well, this is just the real part of a complex number right here. And the real part is just one at this point. So that's represented as the real part. So the real part of the complex number of, on this side has to equal to one. And well, the imaginary part on the left side, it's i times zero, so the imaginary part has to equal to zero. So we have to make this equal to zero. And now we can solve this. And what we end up with is just a simple system of equations. And, and we can solve this. That's not very hard. So we are going to start off with this one. That's the easiest one. So what we can do first, under the condition that b is equal to zero, we can cancel out b's here. So we can divide both sides by a b, so that we end up with this b squared. So what we can conclude is that zero is equal to 2a squared plus a squared minus b squared. And now we can add those two together, so this is just um, 3a squared minus b squared, and then we can bring this b squared to the other side. So what we end up with is just b squared is equal to 3a squared. Okay, and we are going to leave it as it is right now because we can plug this b squared into the equation up here. So that means that this equation is now a to the third power minus 3a and b squared is just 3a squared and this has to equal to 1. So we can bring this together, that's equivalent to a to the third power minus, and that's 9, a to the third power has to equal to 1. This is just minus 8, a to the third power equals to 1. And now we can divide both sides by minus 8. So this is just equivalent to a to the third power equals to 1 over minus 8. And now we can take the third root on both sides. And, well, if we take the third root of a negative number, it's just the negative number. And the third root of 8 is just 2. So that was quite easy. So that means that a is indeed equal to 1 over minus 2. And that's nice. And we can plug this information into here. So this also means that b squared is equal to so this is a squared and a squared is 1 over 4 so that's 3 times uh, 1 over 4 that's 3 over 4 and now we can take the square root on both sides so that means b e is indeed equal to the square root of 3 over 2 and technically plus minus the whole thing because we are taking the square root and that's nothing special because it's most of the time that you get more than one solution on a complex number. So that means in the end that minus 1 to the 2 third power is nothing else than minus 1 half plus minus i times square root of 3 over 2. And that's indeed what we got. And we would choose the positive prompt right here because of the cosine. And then we are done. So it's quite easy, but you should know about complex numbers a bit to deal with stuff like this so that you don't get a contradiction. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and re recommend me if you like. And until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya.